on a technical note, we're trying to record the entire diff. And I'm not sure if the camera or if the, if I have enough RAM allocated to the software to handle it. But we'll see. As everything in this video goes, we just do it. Shoestring budget. God provides. I've been reading recently. What a shock. Some stories on the Internet, how people get carried away sometimes, you know, about prophecy. And they panic over some new site or some old site or somebody that, you know, they look to or trust for news. You know, and I don't know. You know, maybe it's because I work in last generation network news and I have news services that, you know, I provide information to people for that. Maybe I just have a better handle on some of these things than other people. But it seems to be a lot of panic nowadays. You know, there's a story comes out, you know, and whether it's being used by some friendly or foreign government, you know, to manipulate things, to get more aid or to talk to their own press or their own people, you know, to convince them that they're in charge and that they're big and bad. And, you know, what do they call that? Lofocating? Locating? Buffocating? Oh, well, where's O'Reilly when I need him? But they're just shooting off their mouth, you know, trying to make the people think that they're really big, bad leaders, you know, because they're thumbing their nose at America or something. So sure enough, you know, there's people all shook up now about the world news, you know, that, oh, no, here we go again. We're just ending 10 years of war. And now they're getting all wound up again about some other altercation that might come, maybe come, could come. Or do they really need to worry about it in the first place? I don't think so. You see, Jesus told us there would be wars, wars, and rumors of wars, obviously, and that all these things would be distress of nations, that they would be stressful for them, but not for you. I mean, what are you worried about? First of all, is God in control? I mean, you have to ask yourself that. If he's in control, then we don't have to worry. If he's not in control, better worry. Might have to do something. But when you look at news, don't get wrapped up in what the news says. Get wrapped up in what God says. Kind of discover what the Lord is showing you in these news services that are provided to you, because they're not meant to make you pay attention to, oh, no, let's look at Iran or Iraq or whatever country the flavor of the month is at the time, because when it wasn't Iraq or when it wasn't Iran, it was Iraq. And when it wasn't Iraq, then it's Iran. And do you kind of get the picture? They're going to jump from country to country. You know, it's always going to be a different country that's flavor of the month. Now it's no longer Afghanistan, and we don't have to look for some terrorist, you know, who's out running around. It's always going to be something. So really, if you want to pay attention to something, pay attention to someone. Focus your attention of your spirit on Jesus, and you're going to find that he's really got a plan in store. Certain things are going to happen. Certain things aren't going to happen. And no matter what you do, it's not going to matter. Because if you turn it over to God, he'll show you how he's working. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against them. We will rejoice in thy salvation, and in the name of our God we will set up our banners. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come, let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ, the captain of their salvation. My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, valiant for the truth. 
Fight the Lord's battles. Be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. Fear ye not. Lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. The highest priority in a battle, really, is knowing who the enemy is. Because you may be attacking the wrong person or the wrong thing. So, right now, when I see Christians fighting Christians, I keep thinking, you know, I think they got the wrong enemy. You know, because it says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? Against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness, high places. So the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are powerful and spiritual to the tearing down of principalities and kingdoms and all those things. So whenever I read a news story about some battle that might happen or might go on someplace in the world, don't you think we ought to pray? I mean... If we got such a powerful capability in prayer, then how come we're not praying more? How come we're not saying, ha, God will take care of it. I ain't got to worry about it. <laughs> you know what? And they think that they're going to shut down the streets or they're going to do this or that or the other thing. Not a chance. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit over there and let God take care of it. Whatever he decides, he can do. And then you leave it in God's hands and then you don't have to fear for that because... God wants to turn you around from the worldly things to the spiritual things. Because the worldly things tells people to <gasps> that are ungodly to, ooh, we might die. So that you can share the godly news or the good news that's in the midst of the bad news. And the good news is they don't have to fear. They could have peace in their situation by knowing Jesus, the Prince of Peace. You can communicate the gospel in all these things that are happening in the world if you choose to share the gospel. But a lot of people choose to hype people up to get them excited about, oh, it's the end of the world. Well, no, it's not. We still got quite a few years to go. And it may be the end of the world for some that might die. You know, I mean, we could die anytime, and that's why we look up and see our salvation, because God's going to deliver us from this body as soon as we live it. But, in the meantime, while we occupy, we shouldn't be preoccupied with things happening in the world and forgetting that we're supposed to be harvesting from the world those souls that would be saved. That is what our warfare is, is to be knowledgeable about who the enemy is and who and what our function is. Anyone can be a silly nilly or a panic <laughs> a panic Paul you know where it's like oh no oh no or a Mr. Bill oh no Mr. Bill splick or you could be you know somebody a little different like Jesus where he says I think I'll raise the dead today God told me to raise the dead so you go out and raise the dead or you go out and you share the gospel or you go out and heal someone or you go out and help someone because it's really all about knowing your enemy, but knowing also your resources and your friend. Knowing your capabilities and knowing what God is going to do when he says he's going to raise up a banner and take care of it for you. Because while he's holding the enemy at bay, you're supposed to come in and steal his resources. Snatch them away, as it were, from the enemy's clutches. Because really... When you see a world going kind of haywire, it's only going haywire so that you can share Jesus. The church is never so powerful as when it's being persecuted. So don't worry about fighting Christian battles to say Merry Christmas or to say this or that or the other thing. How about going out and sharing Jesus to someone who's perishing and starving and homeless and dying and going to wars that mean nothing, that every five or ten years you're going to have another war, you know, and usually most countries have them about every 20 years or so, you know, they go to war again. Matter of fact, you can look at our history and, boy, we seem to have closer and closer and closer and closer, you know, think about that. We keep getting back into another war every few years and it keeps getting closer and closer together because, you see, a war economy produces jobs. But then when you back off, you produce unemployment. 
gets interesting. You'd be surprised is at how well a country who is impoverished when they go to war can suddenly build up their resources by declaring war on someone else. Sometimes that's what wars are all about, some money. Not really the politics or the ethics. And God wants us to be about something else, which isn't to seek the world and its ways, but to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and that all these things would be taken care of for us as well as provided for us. Because while we are just passing through, we get to enjoy some of it. You know, there's no reason to be all blown out and bummed out because it is the end of the world. And it is. You know, we will see Jesus return. But it's also an opportunity to learn for ourselves how God can deliver the enemy into our hand without us lifting a finger or a hand.